We're just gonna do it the quick and dirty way because that's us. That's us. Just gonna see how they all do on our track. Oh yeah, with a little twist. <laughs> Again. Oh. That is so gnarly, dude. Hope for the best, plan for the worst. What's up everybody, I'm John. I'm Charles. And today on Cars and Cameras, we are reviving our Trailmaster MB200 Ultimate Endurance Racing Mini Bike to prepare for the Go Power Sports 180 three hour mini bike enduro. So we're gonna be showing you kind of what we do to take a bike out of hibernation and to kind of refresh it for competition. And this can apply to you whether you're either preparing for a competition yourself or if you just like to go out on long rides and don't like to get stranded, that's the worst. So we're gonna be showing you all of that and we're gonna be doing some ripping around in preparation to race. So let's do it. We've got a long laundry list of things to do to this bike. So first thing is oil change, valve adjustment, carburetor brace, new chain, probably new belt. Uh, but one of the major things with this frame is when you really start racing it and throwing a lot of horsepower, and really beating on it is you need to stiffen up like the lower chassis uh, like underneath the engine cradle because you'll get a lot you'll get some movement and it'll cause your chain to pop off on like acceleration and really jumping the crap out of this thing so first thing i need to do is probably undress this engine and get it off so we can weld up the chassis not too bad So we modified this, we took the baffles out. And I think we left just two for maximum flow and horsepower, but I don't think we tacked them in well enough because they're gone. Let's get this thing out of here. Carefully. Oh. Being that we are uh, testing the absolute limits of these bikes and the frames, we're going to weld up right where I've marked with the, uh, the red paint marker on both sides and here and here on the inside of this little bracket here. Um, now this is just because um, there's like, so pers personally there's nothing wrong with these chassis as is, but we just are trying to eliminate any sort of flex. And the reason why these have rubber bushings underneath the engine is for vibrations and comfort because in their stock form, it's perfect. But now that we have like tripled the horsepower, we've probably added some extra weight. We're, te you know, we're jumping this thing. It's not what it's intended to do. So we're just trying to stiffen up the chassis as best as possible. So we don't have any flex chain popping off, that sort of stuff. Just any, any, anything that we can do to prevent uh, a failure out on the racetrack. All right, so I'm gonna be using the Dremel tool to knock off the paint on these sections like we talked about earlier just so I can get a good good weld. That way, you know, I, I'm thinking maybe an inch weld on each section, maybe top and bottom. We don't have to go all the way around. It's, it's up to you, you know. Uh, just a good solid weld there so it has no way to move at all. So basically what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be squeezing the top and bottom chain together, simulating the engine and the bike under load, like the acceleration basically. And you're gonna see that the chain that the chassis actually like flexes oh yeah i can see the flex so so the neck of the bike is also flexing i don't know if you yeah i think you can see it between the fender and the but uh between the fender and the backbone uh it's actually pulling the neck of yep. the frame back and we've reinforced ours right yeah, here yeah and we highly recommend a gusset uh it, there, for there. for performance yes for performance um, like in race applications yes because none of this has to be uh fixed on a stock uh yep. bike but when you triple the horsepower things you start to find the weak links and and yeah you know we, this is this is super nice on a stock application because it 
cushions the engine, makes it a smoother yeah, ride. Vibrate more the vibrations. It's it's basically a vibration dampener. Yeah, that's that's all it is, and it's and but it's we don't great. Need it. But we we really do not need it. We need this thing to be rigid, 100. percent So we're gonna reinforce it where we need to, and uh, first things first is need to knock off the paint. But since we're right in the middle of the day, I'm gonna get this prepped for welding. But we're gonna move. We're gonna move. Take a pause on this. Move over to the engine because I don't want to smoke out the shop and you know gas us all out and we can't work in here because this is there's some rubber bushings in here. The proper way to do this is to fully disassemble this cradle system, press out the rubber bushings, reinstall either steel or bronze, and then weld it up. Or you probably don't even need to weld it up after you put the steel and bronze. But we're just gonna do it the quick and dirty way because that's us. That's us. We're gonna start with. Uh, Freshening up our engine, start with an oil change. That's Hot. still the braking oil, right? Oh boy. Is it really? It is. No way. Yeah, it was a brand new engine and the oil said good for a thousand hours, so we said hi. That's still clean. Yeah, it's actually really clean. It looks good. Okay. Quick, get a bottle. We're going to save this. We're going to save it. We're going to bottle it up and sell it. Wow. It's like really, really clean. So we only have the race on that oil. I think so. Because we haven't rid we now haven't this ridden is, this thing since we got back from yeah. Texas. Well, it's once and it got clapped, but we're not going to talk about that. The dirt hog spanked its booty uphill. I wouldn't say spanked. It did okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it won. You were in my wheelbase. I'll give you that. You think it um. I think all the looks I so think clean it, because we didn't start it up and yeah. turn up the garbage first. Yeah, I think it's settled. I think all the well, but the drain plug that's at the bottom, so all right, should have come out. What do you guys think? But we'll still uh, how so, about this? We'll uh, we'll fill it back up. We'll test it around here, and we'll change the oil once more before the race. Yeah, we'll change this cheap. So next up, we're gonna do a valve lash adjustment. This tilts in 225 with the cam and it calls for three thousandths on the intake and exhaust when the engine is cold. So you're gonna to wanna to check your cam card or your factory specs to figure out what you want to set your valve lash to. But if your engine isn't running right, if it's having a hard time starting, Check your valve lash. That's kind of an overlooked item. Uh, it can really help your engine pick up a little bit of power or help it start in some instances. <laughs> and especially if your exhaust valve is way too loose or way out of spec, your compression release won't be working. So you're gonna get that hard snap yeah, back and you know point. hurt your wrist or break your pull cord. So yep. good thing to keep those in check. Yeah, and all these things that we're doing to this bike today are good routine maintenance items. Like if you're pulling your bike out of storage for winter time, go ahead and change the oil, check the valve lash, clean the air filter, install a new belt, or if you're getting ready for a race like we're doing. So all this stuff are good maintenance items that we've never really talked about before, but we try to do on something that we really care about and that we need to rely on. All right, so our intake valve was within spec, so that one's good to go. I've already locked it down at three thousandths. We're going. All right, so that one's broken loose already. So we've got a jam nut and then our adjuster right here. So you loosen the jam nut, tighten the adjuster down to where this pretty much doesn't want to slide in and out without just a little bit of resistance. So what we do is. Lock this down so you get a pair of pliers and hold your adjuster down to where you want it because you want to you want to hold against what you're tightening because when you when you actually tighten the jam nut you're actually going to end up tightening the adjuster which is going to take your lash and make it smaller so it'll be out of adjustment or too tight oh gosh All right, see how it floats Eh. That's more or less like five thousandths. Better go, li better go a little tighter on that one, just to be safe. Since we're going to be tucking our carburetor and air filter back behind this uh, little number plate that we've got here, I've decided to continue and make the rear fender like extend from this crossbar 
all the way across and then down here. So that way this tire, when it's spinning, it's not slinging any dirt and debris or mud or whatever towards our engine. And you know, all that will just prolong the life of the belt, the chain, whatever. So go and stitch that in there. I did it on one of my off-road bikes and like just extending the front fender like this just keeps all this clean like crazy, especially if you're like doing some really off dirty off-road riding. Oh, that sounded bad. Oh boy, why did I, I just walked right into that one. Just luckily for us, Ike buys a lot of old vehicles and this is like one of the little trunk mats that was in one of his trucks that he was throwing away and it's like the perfect rubber soft, like flexible material that we can cut into the shape we want drill a few holes and zip tie it into place and it ought to it ought to take all the abuse i just hope i don't get stitches at the end of the day <laughs> bandsaw maybe bandsaw it, it might be a little it bandsaw might be a little would probably cut through that beautifully seriously you got it oh yeah that's not too bad thanks ike <laughs> see yeah now we can go to the bandsaw and maybe trim up this edge but let's just give you a little example it's like a little diaper oh yeah i know exactly i know all about those there we go it's pretty nice not too bad and i'll uh i'll cut i'll cut a notch for the chain to go out but it should be pretty good yeah the air filter out Ought to be nice and clean up there. Drill some holes for some zip ties. Looks cool, man. Yeah, ought to be a pretty functional one. I left the uh, the bottom ones loose because we still got to do the welding down here. We stress this on our channel about oiling air filters before a you know a ride, especially when we're at Mini Mayhem or the the GPS 180. That we must have forgotten to oil the air filter because that's what three four hours of use. Yeah, <laughs> and we're pretty sure it did come from the air filter, judging by the the dirt line in there. So yeah, we didn't oil it, and it even had a pre filter on there. So their products did the job. We just forgot the final step. That's on us. Yep, you need an air filter, pre filter. You, you need to oil it. You got to oil it. So our air filter would have been filthy dirty after the race if we would have oiled it because all the dirt would have stuck to it. But because we didn't do it, the really fine stuff went through the pre-filter filter and into the engine. Bummer. We're going to send it anyway. Yep. It's fine. It'll be it's fine. It's a Tillotson. Yeah. She'll chew on it. So part of the prepping on this bike for the race, we are going to be replacing the Juggernaut with a brand new Juggernaut. We are doing this as preventative maintenance because we ran this thing hard and we don't want to have any issues. It could have gotten dirt in there, rocks, whatever. We're just gonna go ahead and put a brand new one on so we don't have to worry about it. Another thing we're gonna install is this used super pipe. Uh, this is what we have hanging around the shop. There's nothing wrong with it. And we're gonna do some modifications to it to help with uh, breathing. It's gonna help us go a little bit faster. And, uh, by the way, guys, all of the parts used on this build are going to be links in the description of the video, so make sure you check them out. We're going to take the uh, K&N air filter cleaner spray, and you're going to want to spray it heavily, especially where most of the dirt is trapped. You want to make sure to get it all, but look at it already dripping off. We're going to let that set up for just, just a little bit and then we'll give it a shake in the water. Just show you how much dirt this stuff will pull out. Not too bad. We may spray it once more, let it soak and blow it out, again. but you definitely want to let this uh, air dry and if you're impatient, hang it with a like a coat hanger in front of a fan and let it blow through there if you're in a hurry. But not too bad. Got all the dirt right out. We gotta make sure to oil it this time. Yeah. All right, so our original header worked great, but unfortunately we lost our uh, baffles. 
on this. So we are going to modify this other uh, header and I'm gonna do it a little bit different. I'm gonna cut this off at the end so we can stick our baffle in or flame arrestor, whatever you want to call it, and I can weld it in there, put the end back on, and I can weld this in, and uh, hopefully we won't lose any of our baffles during the race like we did last year. Yeah, because we're not sure how many are in there, but we're leaving two. I think there's four in there, uh, but it's been a whole year since I've seen it, yep. so we're going to find out how many are in here. I'm thinking four of those little baffles. Yeah, and we'll get rid of the spacers, so we're just going to lighten up the whole thing. Yeah. Just take care of it. Yeah. Oh, nice. So we're going to be adding this in there straight. That's not take two. We don't need it. And we're gonna weld it up. And uh, nice. I had it and I lost it's it. It's okay. <laughs> so we're gonna be welding this thing up straight and then we're gonna be adding the uh, end back on. Yep. Oh, look. Oh, so. Yeah, I'll put that in there. Okay. All right. Cool. So we'll, we'll tack that one at the end and we'll weld the muffler back together. Cover. So uh, we went ahead and got the header done. Pay no attention to those nasty welds. We're building uh, something work. fast, not a show bike. It'll work. So the end is welded in there. So we don't have all those sleeves in the exhaust. So actually, it's just a little bit lighter. It's probably going to hang in there a little bit better than than uh, what what the last one did. So. Charles yep. is now working on yeah. now that welding. The, yeah, now that's the end of the day, like I promised, we're gonna finish welding up this chassis because it's gonna start. It's gonna stink. It's gonna smoke up the place. Because I'm doing it, I'm doing it the lazy way, but also a very so, effective way. Yeah, there there are different ways that you can do this. You can take those rubber bushings out of, of here, and you can turn down steel sleeves or maybe a uh, bronze bushing bronze or something. bushing or something and put in there and you can bolt it up tight or you weld it up yep and I've already welded one up before and it's rock solid hasn't it, has it broken so we're gonna try it again all right and I'm just gonna tack on each spot just so it holds it still and then we'll move around and keep the heat moving all right, all right go yep all right so now that the bike is now, newly assembled now we are ready for a uh, track test so we are going to drop this thing down get it on the ground and we have two other bikes that we're going to run up against it and we're just going to see how <laughs> they all do on our track oh yeah with a little twist we're going backwards right run on the track backwards what okay yeah. cool just just to be new all right duck and cover so charles you riding this one yeah I need to get I need to get the most used to this because I I think in the what is it the two or three one eighties that what there's only been two this is the third annual yeah I, I did one lap in the two one eighties so I need some practice so welcome to the 2023 cars and cameras Go Power Sports 180 simulation race in the backyard all right in this corner we have Ike on the Trailmaster MB200-1. This is the OG. We've had this bike for a long time. It has a lot of miles on it. It's got a very spicy engine on it. It's a 212. And the torque converter has what we call just worn the heck out stall. Because it, it's got a heck of a launch to it. But it only engage. it's like a completely stock 30 series. It engages at like 3,500 RPM. It got a heck of a stall to it. But we don't know why. We like it though. Yeah. Are putting me on the busted bike. We are. Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, uh, Charles is letting me ride the dirt hog, which is very brave of him because I dumped it so bad a couple of weeks ago. It's uh, very spicy. Got a nice head on it. It's a Tillotson 212 electric start motor. Coleman CT200U. 
EX. No rear suspensions, it's gonna be interesting. And we're sticking Charles on the good bike. Over here, this is the MB200-3, I think. Brand new last year for the 180. It's got about five hours on it, just because he's the most inexperienced rider on uh, these bikes. So that's what we're doing. We're getting him some practice with other riders in a crowd. We're gonna try to simulate the track best we know through trails, the regular track, wide open uh, spaces, and the woods. So uh, let's pick out a trail, boys, and let's ride. All right. So, fellers, yes. we're trailblazing. We're finding a new track. Yep. We're practicing for the 180. Don't, don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt yourselves. Right now, we're just trying to find a track, and then we might get a little competitive once we settle on something. Sound good? Sounds yeah. good. Oh, yeah. Following you guys? Okay. Ike's I'll leading. follow Charles. No, Ike's leading. <laughs> It's been a while since we've been on this. Right. Let me just test it. Test it, Oh, okay. Oh, this is solid. This is very solid. We should just zip tie this, the uh, kickstand up. We zip tied it for the race. Yeah, let's do that. So what's as good as the top zip tied up? Which one? Golly, we got duct tape on the race bike. Yeah, already. Already. That's okay. Just not trying to wad up that kickstand. 
All right, boys. All so right. are we doing a warm up lap and then once we cross the road, green or what? Yep. Yeah. That cool. sounds yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. My knee. Oh, ho, ho, ho. all right. I'm good. I'm just gonna hang out for a while. Oh. Where's John? So I got left knee straight to the handlebars. Oh, that's okay. I have like four days to recover. They're still racing. 
Whatever happened to no man left behind? It's okay. It's good practice. Because he just doesn't have the horsepower at this point. Not long ago. Has this been like this the whole time? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, got my knee pretty good. Thank you. Ugh. I need some real knee pads because like the roofing ones, they slipped down and my knee went bonk into the, the triple tree area. So. Oh, crap. So did you just get kind of switched up in these bumps and then... Yeah. Dang it. Yeah. No, it was it was fine. I and like I just I don't mean to scare you guys. It just like my uh, knee hurt and I didn't want to feel like getting the bike off. I guess uh we should wait at the starting line for everybody to pass. Well, um, yeah, I like I was kind of hoping you were going to stop me. when you went through. Yeah. Cuz I didn't see John for a good minute. I was like, "Oh, well." I was uh ho I thought he was right behind me. Well, he was, but That's a, I was. I was probably. hustling that thing to keep up with you. Yeah. A little too hard. Yeah. So, okay. I guess we can just keep practicing. John, you yeah, want to take break? a practice? You two take keep a... practicing. I am going to be uh, probably getting some ice. Okay. Yeah. That'd probably be uh, good. Man, I'm sorry. It's hot. I'm I mean, it's not a big deal. It's just we have to be recovered and racing in a few days. So, yeah. and it took a decent spill. So, yeah, hardtail bike. Oh, well. Okay. Trying to keep up with the big boys. Okay, good. But let's, let's just go to the shop. Let's just go to the shop. Make sure he's okay. Are you uh, feeling okay uh, riding yeah. that thing? Yeah, man. so gnarly dude uh yeah i cannot keep up with that bike it is just so fast he pulls away from me like i'm standing still it's the technical stuff that i'm catching him at yeah but you just can't outperform that power it is so nice but that's a 225 right yeah yeah. With just a little bit of head work and no, stuff? No, it's stage four. Stage four head? Yeah, with a thin head gasket and uh, okay. fire 265. Okay. We don't need to give it's all just... our secrets. <laughs> but it is awesome. How are you feeling about the track, dude? I like it. Yeah, dude. We, we need to do that a few more times just to make, because like I could feel it with my arms. You know, that, that those four laps that we did, that's it's probably- It's about like one that's probably of the one Power Sports 180. Yes. I'm wondering if I should start doing push-ups right now. <laughs> Practicing. You need to start working out. That's it's for sure. It's really forearm and yeah. just overall fitness. Yeah. Cardio. Yeah. So our practice was moderately successful. We're going to run it again tomorrow, but we will catch up with you guys in Texas to do our last couple of upgrades to this bike at Go Power Sports HQ. See you there. All right, dude. This bearing over here is pretty buttery. It's got a couple of chunks in it. I think that side is just fine. Oh, goodness. This one, however, this one's bad. I don't think this would have lasted the whole race. Really? Yeah, feel it. Wow. Um, okay. Very chunky. Yeah. For sure. Oh. Oh. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm good. It was, <laughs> it was coming right for me. <laughs> so here's something to know, guys. There's no collar on the inside of these two bearings. So you cannot crank down on the nut on the jack shaft on this, or you will damage your bearings. So tighten down the castle nut, basically finger tight, line up the 
uh, cotter pin with the castle nut, you probably want to be a little bit looser than tighter. So if you got a crank on it to line it up, don't do it. Loosen it to line it up. Beautiful. Guys, another thing to note is do not hammer on the center of this bearing. Always hammer on the outside. And in fact, when I finish up on the last of the hammering, I like to take one of the old bearings that I have lost. Right here. And I put it over the top like this and I just give it a last little wrap. So it is finished. Let's uh, reassemble. And you heard it bottom out. Oh man, that's much better. Much better. Much better. Oh yeah, dude, that is smooth. Well, brand new bearings. Brand new bearings. Good stuff. Yep, yep, I'm good. Yep, okay, all right, cool. There's our monster. There it is. Dude, it's a good looking bike, wow. It's uh, pretty impressive, I, I like it. <laughs> it's such a good looking bike. The Boss Hog. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah. Uh, we gotta try to get the... Uh, the tack working? Tack working. I think... Yeah. That one is brand spanking new, but has been on the shelf so long, I think the battery, battery is dead. dead. Oh, great. You know what we almost forgot to talk about? What did we almost forget to talk about? Checking your brake fluid. Well, the brake fluid does feel a little we gotta, spongy. We gotta swap it out for uh, wintertime brake fluid. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, ooh. Yeah, we should probably bleed that. It's got it some moisture looks, in it. Yeah, it's got moisture in it. All right, bleed the brakes. I'm blaming you, it was in your warehouse. I'm just kidding, it's not his fault. Don't. Opening. Open, close. Closed. Open. Opening. Close. Closed. How are we looking up front, bud? Not good. Not good. It looks worse. Really? Yeah. Yeah, if your bike or, or go-kart is exposed to humidity, you really need to be checking the, the brake fluid and flushing it. Yeah. How bad? <laughs> Wow, yeah, that's it's bad. Wow. All right, this is just one season. Yeah, exactly. Okay. We're gonna be doing this every single time now. Yeah. One of the final touches: we're installing a Go Power Sports tachometer, hour meter, and temperature dude sensor. I didn't it's know like that, all of it. I didn't know they sold these. I think I might have to come home with one or two. Oh yeah, I'm gonna come home with a pocket full. Hey, no, I'm paying. I'm paying for them though. I brought the bus. Oh, so we can take home as load. many as we uh, need. So basically the yellow wire is the tack wire and yep. you wrap it around your spark plug wire. And I've done it more than you need, but. Plenty of times you can fasten it with a zip tie, but that's yep. what picks up the signal from the coil and to then, tell you your RPM. Then the other wire, it's got this copper. Take the uh, spark what, plug out. What would you call this? The copper. Uh, eyelet. Eyelet. Take, this, take the spark plug out, feed the spark plug through there. Tighten her down. Tighten her down and have it kind of pointing up, That's not down. That's gonna tell your head temperature. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yep. And what what did what did Paul hot. what did Paul say? Anything over what four hundred degrees, you got a problem? I don't remember. Yeah. We shouldn't have that problem with this engine. No, no, it's no. not that spicy. Yeah. Wow, that's Jeff Bezos. <laughs> My goodness. A little bit of carbon on there too. Uh, well, uh, uh, Rich is happy, right? Oh, she's I mean, definitely happy. Yeah. You can't we cry, can always, you can't cry on a sea do. She's ecstatic. <laughs> Sorry, that was wrong, Rich. We let, me, let me see if we got a spark plug. Well, no, you said, dang, it's better to live rich. I was like, yeah, you can't cry on a sea do. Oh, you know? yeah. Well, you can, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Still going to be having fun. So we can drop the uh, the needle maybe one, uh, one or two uh, notches. Nah. Keep WOT. She's only sitting up because of that idle stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
tires. spicy. That worked. Cool, man. Man, this, I haven't really, I think that's the most I've ridden this bike. <laughs> and I'm doing wheelies right away. <laughs> cool, man. Well, we will see you guys in the morning out at the ranch for practice day. I shouldn't speak too soon, but I feel very comfortable on this bike. Awesome. I like it. That's what we want to hear. Yeah. yeah, the front end is I so mean, nice. Dude, like, it's like, it's like being on a cloud. That's right. All right. So we're going to be replacing the grips with these really, really nice thruster grips. They have like a, the best way I can describe pillow it. Pillow top. Pillow top handle. It's going to be so nice. A lot more comfortable. On our hands. And I can't, I, I doubt you can tell on the phone, but there are two different sizes. The larger one goes on the twist grip. And uh, these are gonna just go right on, and we're gonna we're gonna be loving these handles. And you can get them right here at Go Power Sports. So uh, sometimes these handles can be a real pain, but other times they just slide right off. Oh, look at that! There we go. And you can use like soap or you know stuff Index, like that. Whatever. Windex. Uh, I like to try. Yeah. We need air. Can we find some Windex or something? Okay. I mean, uh, you, air works, I've but got... let's let's see. I, they don't like to work on the uh, well, uh, twist grip. So I believe air is going to work for this. So we're going to. Oh, it's, it's blowing out the other side. I got it. You got it? Okay. Because yep. it was coming out of this one. This one was yeah, but it, over it here. was just enough to uh, nice, dude. do the thing. Okay. Safety glasses are probably a really good thing for this job. I'll step back. So, let's see if we can... Yep. Probably gloves is a good thing, too, yeah. because you don't want that. to... And I, Hit and you got to be careful because I've actually, with enough air pressure, you can blow a hole yeah. through the, through the hand grip. Hold the, the, I'm gonna hold this one on so you. it doesn't blow off. The reason why I don't like to put like soap and stuff on it is sometimes it, take, it has to dry. It has to dry. Sometimes it never dries, and mm -hmm. then the handle can slip off. And during this race, there's that, gonna be a lot of force on these grips. That we would, probably want nothing on it at all. <laughs> oh, yep. I got gotcha. you. Okay, thank you, John. Dang. Uh, so it's blowing out. So, yeah. <laughs> so what I actually had to do, it's working. There we so go. what I had to do my, when when I was struggling to do it by myself, and you may have to do this if you're doing it by yourself, if you're blowing this one on and the air's coming out of this, remove <laughs> yeah. your hand grip and wrap the end of the bar with duct tape. That does work, doesn't and it? And then yep. you it just, you know, a little bit of air at a time. Yep. You always good. feel those grips. I never used to think about grips, but like, like you know, your body is not really touching very much of the bike, so it's important that like the parts that are touching the bike are comfortable and grippy. <laughs> Maybe yeah. next year we'll get some rubber isolators down here. Yeah, that's a great idea yeah. too. But this so. setup's perfect. The risers, the tachometer, dude, nice. So yeah, grips, great idea for your race bike, cruiser bike, anything, cheap upgrade. So. A couple of our uh, subscribers on our Mini Mayhem Facebook page yep. said that they're planning on flying down from New York State okay. tonight at midnight. Yes. Buying two Trailmasters okay. and competing in the Go Power Sports 180. They stole our idea. Awesome. And I want to deliver. I want cars and cameras to deliver these bikes to them. Okay. Do we have room in the bus? How many? Two uh, more. Hurt. Two. Two more. Hurt. We yeah. may only need to make one room for one. Oh, we got a rack on the back? Oh, oh yeah. we'll be good to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go pick out some bikes for them once okay. you guys finished up. All right. Cool. Well, we were thinking about loading them up on the rear rack, but you guys beat us to it. 
two brand new Hurricanes, man. Just yesterday, I was saying this would be the perfect stock bike for the 180. Full suspension, front and rear brakes, 196. Can't wait to see him get delivered. Woo! We're here in the luxury limo. Hey! Many bikers. Oh, there's the barn. So many, many hey, bikers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, ah. Our spot got taken. I know, but what if we just park right here in front of the fence? I don't sure. know if we're allowed, but I don't think, I don't see why not. You know, get a little heat in the motor. What do you got? I'm no expert, but your axle bolt is not supposed to look like that, Jeremy. No, it's just a J, it's cool. <laughs> right, and we were flying. Well, good thing it's just a practice day. Yeah, we'll get her back up and running. You even still have daylight. You guys are ahead of schedule. Yeah. <laughs> About a, maybe a quarter of the way in the lap. That and I knocked my carburetor off. Yeah, that's all right. Super hog. Well, that's where the you know the 90 degree new uh, intake manifold really yeah. helps. That would come uh, in does anybody have a zip tie? Yeah. I need just one because my uh, apparently I think the back my methanol got to my vacuum line right there. Oh, it blew it's it out. It's not staying on. I'm not running methanol. Don't worry. Don't worry. I wow, will. you can really tell the size of this hill, how gnarly it is. But this bike just climbs up it absolutely no problem. It's amazing. Yeah. What? Having the forward tags? Written nice? No. No. <laughs> no good? Okay. Terrible. Are we good? Uh, yeah, we're good. Let's keep it moving. I just hit the, uh, what is it, the unexpected kill switch. <laughs> hey, that's Buster right there. You guys can thank him for the CR500 that I buy. She thanks Buster. He pointed it out. <laughs> they freaking yeah. hate it. <laughs> yeah, when y'all was talking about uh, the expenses on it, I was thinking about what uh, Joe Exotic said. I'm not going to find any. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. exactly. No, my leg still hurts. I'm pretty sure his foot still hurts. From it, so. oh, got you. Gotta say, oh, there are worse places yeah, to be broken you. down. It's absolutely gorgeous out here. So, our bike is really fast, very capable. Uh, but there are a lot of other fast riders this year. So, we were having a problem with it breaking up. It kind of medium and high load uh, situation. So, our buddy Alex has thrown a new air filter on it. And uh, we're gonna go back out. We had to scrounge up some other bikes so we can get a thumbnail and take some video shots. Uh, yeah, but hopefully we can work all these kinks out. Our sputtering issue seems to be getting worse. We're gonna check simple stuff, fuel flow. Alex just replaced the air filter. Still running poorly, so. I, need I just took a stock hurricane out flowers. and I was joking that a stock hurricane might be the best experience at the 180 because you're not going 55 miles an hour. What, the, the, the small part? Well, after driving this, I gotta say, you, you gotta do a couple of upgrades first. You need the mid mount pegs. Uh, and it's just so down on horsepower. <laughs> so, yeah, this bike is, is the way to go. One lap and I'm feeling good and comfortable on it again. What do you say? Hope for the best, plan for the worst. Yep. Go win something. I like it. Still running poorly. What do you say? So the last thing we did was throw a spark plug at it. We could have a faulty spark plug. Yeah, uh, let's uh, throw the other spark plug in. Yeah. What do we got, Alex? It's pretty rich. A little rich. A little rich. Charles is bringing out the two. 
Ride it way better than I can. <laughs> wow, hey, he's gapping them, dude. Woo. The reserve power is there. Yeah, look at him. Hold on, where is he? Hit it, buddy. Hit it. like it's on a rail. Dude, dude you, were, you were riding the heck out of it too. Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. Nice. Hey, you, you, you want to buy it? <laughs> you can ride it way better than I can. So you have the professionals. Alright, I think we're just being mean now. How was your Leave a thumbs up if you found some of this tech useful. Uh, change your oil, adjust your valves, uh, make sure you got a fresh belt on your bike, and wear proper safety gear. So we had a lot of fun at the Go Power Sports 180. I'm going to try to truck through that for editing to get it out this Friday. It was an epic race. Uh, a lot of fun, a lot of cool moments as well. So I hope you guys are enjoying the longer videos as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. So now you're going to work on engine stuff? Oh, you're going to clean up yeah, the I'm paint? Yeah, I'm going to do everything I can ready to weld, so that way that's the last thing we do today. Yeah. All right. Talk, I'll chuck the engine now. Chuck horsepower. Well, you are full of hot air. <laughs> <laughs>